Today I'm sharing with you my top 10 fall Instant Pot recipes that you need to make. Now if you cook with your Instant Pot all the time, I am so proud of you. If your Instant Pot is still sitting on the counter or in your pantry, you guys, it's time to take it out because these fall Instant Pot recipes are so easy, so simple. Trust me, you're gonna wanna try them. All right guys, let's just jump into the recipes. So this one I'm gonna cook in an Instant Pot, but you can do it in a stock pot too. So first we're gonna just push the saute button and we're gonna let it heat up. Then this recipe we're going to use ground turkey. You can use beef too if you want to, but I like turkey. Then we're just gonna chop up the turkey with our lovely chopster. If you don't have one of those, I highly suggest it. We're just gonna cook this until it's all the way browned. After about a minute or two, I'm gonna go ahead and add a half onion to a whole onion. I'm adding a whole one because I actually really love onions. And then you're just gonna add everything else. So we're gonna add two cans of stewed tomatoes. Then we have two cans of beans. So we have kidney beans. Now these are rinsed and drained. And then we have pinto beans. These are also rinsed and drained. Then we have half a cup of salsa. I like using Herdez salsa, that's my favorite. And then for the seasonings, we just have one tablespoon, oh boy, one tablespoon of chili powder and then another tablespoon of cumin. Then you're just going to mix everything together until it's heated through. I love making chili. It, I just think it has the perfect consistency. All right, my favorite thing to serve with chili is I love Fritos on my chili. Then I like to add a little bit of sour cream. I'll mix that all in. And then usually after everything's mixed, I will add cheese on top. All right, mine's a little different because we're gonna do baby back ribs. I actually like those a little bit better, so we're gonna cut into this. Now, there is a little bit of fat here. I don't love the fat on my ribs, so I'm just going to cut out a little bit of the fat. Okay, then you wanna make sure that you flip. Now, she did it right. You wanna get rid of these membranes. I just kinda stick, stuck my thumb under. Sometimes you can just pull it right off. Others, you have to really work at it, but just to get that extra layer, it will make it a lot easier to eat and to cut when it's done cooking. Now, this part was interesting that she did mustard because I usually only do mustard when I smoke meat, so we're gonna give it a try. I've never done the mustard in the Instant Pot, so we'll see how it goes. All right, and it looked like she just didn't really measure, just lots of salt and pepper, which I am a fan. Then she had some paprika. We're gonna use smoked paprika because I like that better. All right, then we're gonna flip it, do the same. Salt and your pepper. Can't go wrong with the paprika. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so we have about three-fourths cup of water. We're gonna add about a, another fourth cup of apple cider vinegar. She didn't really measure, which is just fine when you're getting liquid for an Instant Pot. You're totally fine doing that. The thing that I'm gonna do different, I'm gonna add a trivet to the bottom of the Instant Pot. And then we'll just add the liquid to the bottom of the pot. Now you have two options. You can curl them or you can lay them flat, but I like what she did. I've curled most of my ribs when I cook them and I like that a little bit better. When you use the trivet, you can lift your ribs up so they're not soaking in the water and I just like it better that way. So put your lid on. Now this is my newer Instant Pot, so we're gonna go to pressure cook and then we're gonna cook this for 25 minutes and we're gonna push start on this one. Now lots of them, you don't have to push start, you can just set the timer and it will automatically go. All right, after about 15 minutes, you're gonna make sure all the pressure is out so you can open up the lid. We're gonna put this on a cookie sheet because we are gonna broil it. I'm sorry if you hear Harper in the background. She's a little sad right now. Ooh, it is falling apart, literally falling apart. We're just gonna flip this because I wanna put some barbecue sauce on this side. All right, now you're just gonna take your favorite barbecue sauce. I have Sweet Baby Ray's here, which I love, but there is also sugar-free barbecue sauce that you can use too. And then I'm just gonna take a brush and we're just gonna spread the barbecue sauce all over. Now we're gonna broil this baby. I'm just gonna do a high broil for a few minutes or until my barbecue sauce starts to bubble a little bit. So you wanna make sure you keep an eye on it. You don't want it to burn. Special helper today. All right, let's cut into this. Oh, it's just, you don't really need a cut. It really just falls apart. <laughs> Okay, so for this recipe, obviously you need a roast, but then you need some beef broth, some Worcestershire sauce, some seasoning, so we have garlic powder, onion powder, and then some salt and pepper. Two packets of brown gravy, and then I like to use sourdough for my base, so you just want a big slice of bread for the bottom. All right, so my roast is kind of huge, so I actually just put it in 
in here without showing you. It's totally frozen. So you're supposed to season your roast. If it's frozen, it doesn't season very well. So I'm just gonna add the seasoning into the bottom of the pot. So we're just gonna, it's kind of these seasonings are to taste. So I'll do about a teaspoon of each one. So we have about a teaspoon of salt, and add a teaspoon or so of pepper, and I'm trying to get it on the roast. We'll see how this goes. About a teaspoon of some garlic powder, and about a teaspoon of onion powder. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just add about a cup and a half of beef broth into a little extra bowl or something, because we want to mix these all together before we put it in our roast. So then we're gonna add both packets of our brown gravy, and then one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, whatever you call it, that's what it is. One tablespoon of that. And we're gonna mix this all together. Now, if you seasoned your roast, which I'm kind of seasoned, you wanna put your gravy on the side. You don't want to cover it, cover up your roast, because we wanna leave those seasonings, or as much as we can, on the roast. Now, I forgot to mention, this is a rump roast with a bone in, but really any type of beef roast will work for cooking it low and slow. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Now, if you have a little knob that goes from sealing to venting, make sure it's on sealing. Now, this Instant Pot's a little bit different. My pressure cooks over here, and so we're actually gonna go for about an hour and 30 minutes. You know, I could even go higher if I wanted to, just because we want it to just sit in here for as long as we can. Now, with this one, I actually have to push start, and we are good to go. All right, many hours later, I l actually let it sit in here for about five more hours once the timer went off. And then I actually already opened it up and shredded all the beef, so we are ready to go. Okay, so I have our sourdough ready to go. I like to have a little bit of vegetables and I wanted some mashed potatoes with it. So we're just gonna go ahead, take out the meat and just put it right onto the sourdough. Now, you can easily make some beef gravy out of this. Just add a little bit of cornstarch and water, but I am out of time. So I'm actually just gonna take this and just put it right onto my bread. The bread might be a little bit soggy, but that's okay. And then I'm also going to add some of this broth onto my potatoes. Okay, so first we're gonna start with a pound and a half to two pounds of ground beef. We want an onion, we have some pepper, we have some seasoned salt, and then we have some good old W sauce. So this is what we're gonna use for the beef. We're also gonna make the special Big Mac sauce. So you have some French dressing, relish, mayo, vinegar, some ketchup, a little bit of sugar, and some salt. Now we're gonna make this in our Instant Pot. You can easily do it on the stove top too, but we're gonna push the saute button and wait until this gets hot and then we'll start throwing things in. All right, we are ready for our beef. We're just gonna throw it in and then throw in a half an onion too. We're gonna cook this all up. All right, for the sauce, we're gonna add three fourths cup of mayonnaise. And with this recipe, I mean, we're gonna kind of just guess on three-fourths cup. It doesn't have to be exact. And we're gonna have three tablespoons of our Catalina dressing. Two tablespoons of ketchup. We can go a little I like ketchup. Two tablespoons of relish. Now one tablespoon or so of onion, diced onion. And then about one and a half teaspoon of white vinegar. One teaspoon of sugar, a pinch of salt, or about an eighth of a teaspoon. We're just gonna eyeball. Then we're gonna mix this all together. This is the special sauce. We had to turn the lights on because a storm is rolling through, but if you can see, the grease is puddling up, and so I'm going to drain, drain the grease here. I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna add one teaspoon of seasoned salt, a fourth teaspoon of pepper, and then a half tablespoon of the W sauce. And we're just gonna mix in the seasoning. All right, so we're gonna save about half a cup of the special sauce. You can always make more if you need more. That's a little more, but that's okay. And then we're gonna dump the rest into the beef. All right, so now it's time to put everything together. So we're going to add our yummy beef onto the bun. We wanna make it a Big Mac, so we gotta think of, okay, everything that's on a Big Mac, right? Then you have your American cheese. Then you need our shredded lettuce. Then our pickles. And then you need a little bit more of your special sauce, right? That's what makes the Big Mac.
Now my noodle of choice today is small shell noodles. So you just need one pound of noodles. Then you're gonna put them in the bottom of your Instant Pot. You're gonna take your pot and fill it just until the noodles are covered with water. Next, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure it's sealed correctly. Now if you have a knob, you wanna turn it to sealing, not venting. Next, you'll push manual or pressure cook button and go to four minutes. Now after a few seconds, it will say on. That means you're good, you can walk away. Now after the four minutes, you can turn the knob to release it, but just beware with pasta, sometimes it makes a giant mess. So you can turn it back and forth, releasing the pressure slowly. Once all the pressure's out, go ahead and lift the lid up and your pasta should be done. Now I didn't need to drain any water because there was no water left to drain. So go ahead and mix up your noodles before you add the other ingredients. So first I'm gonna add about eight tablespoons of butter. I like to use salted butter, that's my favorite in macaroni and cheese. Next, you're gonna add about a half a cup of milk. Now we're gonna add a little bit more, but right now we're just gonna add half a cup. Then we're gonna add two cups of sharp cheddar white cheese. Did you hear that? Sharp cheddar cheese, it is amazing. And then about a half a cup to a cup of shredded Parmesan. So now it's time to just mix everything in. So slowly, gently mix it in. Now it'd be easier to push the saute button just to get it warm or warmer on the bottom to melt your butter faster and to melt your cheese faster. Now because it is really cheesy, you wanna make sure to add just a little bit more liquid just so you can make it creamy, not so chunky cheesy. So I added a half a cup more of milk. Then you're just gonna continue mixing until all of your butter is melted and all of your cheese is mixed together. Now you can add just a little bit of salt and pepper. I just like to add salt in my mac and cheese and then go ahead and mix that in as well. Now when you're all done, your cheese should be nice and creamy. This is how we like it. Now when I serve it, I also like to add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. And there you have it. It is called seven can taco soup because you're literally using seven cans. So we're gonna start with our canned chicken. If you don't like canned chicken, you can use rotisserie chicken too. That will work just fine. The next can is canned corn and I'm going to leave the liquid in there. Next is just one can of chicken broth, so about 14 ounces. I rinsed and drained one can of pinto beans. We have one can of diced tomatoes. I like the little diced tomatoes in my taco soup. And then it calls for green enchilada sauce. Now you usually get a smaller can, but they were out. So we're gonna just use half of this. So you wanna use about, I don't know, 14 ounces or so of green enchilada sauce, maybe even 10 ounces. Kind of depends on how you like it. All right, took a little longer, had a little accident, only had avocado band-aids. So it's gonna be about a 17 minute recipe instead of 15. And the can that caused all the problems is the black beans. So rinsed and drained black beans, there we go. And the last thing, you want some seasoning, so we're just gonna add some taco seasoning in there. You can also add some salt and pepper. I usually add that with each individual bowl. Now we're just gonna mix everything together. Now as I mix, I want you to realize everything has been cooked through, so you can just put this on saute and wait till it's all heated up, or you can pressure cook this for about three minutes, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna do the saute button because my kids are ready to eat, we're ready to go, so we'll just keep mixing this until everything is nice and hot. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of cheese on here because you know, cheese is good with everything. And then because it is our tortilla soup, we're gonna eat it with some tortillas. First, you're gonna push the saute button and wait until the center of the pot is nice and hot. Okay, when it starts to get nice and hot, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of butter and just kind of mix that around. We want to coat the bottom. Now once it's done, we're gonna add about one to two pounds of cut up chicken. Now you can see that I've cut it into bite-sized pieces and we'll just put this into the Instant Pot. So right now I'm gonna add the seasoning mixture just all over the chicken. I'll put the link down below in the description so you can find what I'm putting in. Then we're just gonna go ahead and mix this all together. So while your chicken is sauteing, go ahead and add an onion to it. We're going to mix this into the chicken. All right, we're going to just mix this around until all the chicken is seared on all sides. You can tell that we're still pretty pink, so we'll just keep on cooking. Okay, once all your chicken is browned and good to go, you're gonna add one pound of pasta. You can just dump it right into your pot. Then on top of that, you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now here's the most important thing. You wanna make sure that all the noodles are covered with liquid, because if they're not, they're not gonna cook all the way and you will have crunchy noodles. No one wants to 
melts crunchy noodles. So you wanna make sure that you press down all these noodles. If you need to add a little bit more liquid, like water, if you're at a chicken broth, you can. Okay, you're gonna make sure your lid is on. If you have a little knob that says sealing and venting, make sure it's on sealing. Then we're gonna push pressure cook and go all the way down to four minutes because noodles only take four minutes to cook. All right, so it's all done. We let all the pressure out so we can open the lid. Oh, it looks good. You guys, no crunchy noodles. I'm just gonna mix this around just a little bit. Okay, so to add to this, we're gonna add the remaining three tablespoons of butter and then four ounces of cream cheese, so like half a block, and I cut it into small squares so it will melt a little bit faster for me. Then we have about a cup and a half of whipping cream. You can use milk too if you want to. It just won't be as creamy, but still delicious. And then about a fourth a cup or so of shredded Parmesan. Then we're just gonna mix everything together until the cream cheese is nice and melted and it's creamy. Okay, so if there's a little bit too much liquid, all you have to do is come down here. You're gonna push cancel, and then you're gonna push saute until it is the texture that you want. So we'll just keep mixing until, yeah, all of the liquid is out that we want. All right, you guys can see this. It looks so good. Okay, we're gonna just put it in a bowl here. Okay, then when you serve it, I like to sprinkle a little bit more Parmesan cheese on top. And then if you have any fresh basil, this is my favorite with basil. All right, guys, here it is. So yummy. We're gonna start by pushing the saute button and I am cooking one pound of ground sausage turkey. You don't need olive oil or anything else because it has enough grease. We're gonna add a little bit of onions, a one, two cloves of garlic, and go ahead and just mix that till it's all the way cooked. Then we're gonna add one zucchini that's finely chopped, one green pepper that's also finely chopped, one can of crushed tomatoes, and one can of diced tomatoes. And go ahead and just mix it all together. Next, you're gonna add one can of condensed tomato soup, six ounces of tomato paste. Just go ahead and dump that all in and then mix it again all together. Now, as you mix, you wanna make sure you get that turkey off the bottom. Now, I forgot to film the spices, so you need one teaspoon of white sugar, one and a half teaspoons of dried basil, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a half teaspoon of salt, and a little bit of ground pepper to taste. Sorry about that. Now after all of the seasonings are in, you're gonna add four cups of beef broth and then just mix it around really well. Next, you're gonna add 20 ounces of frozen mini cheese filled ravioli. You just wanna make sure all the ravioli is covered with the liquid. Go ahead and put the lid on. Make sure that little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. You're gonna push the pressure cook button and we only have to cook that for two minutes. When it's done, go ahead and release the pressure when all the pressure's out, you can lift your lid up and serve it with a little bit of cheese and parsley on top. So you're gonna go ahead and push the saute button. Then we're gonna add just a little bit of oil into the pot. Then I'm gonna dump in one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts cut up into small pieces. Now go ahead and let that cook on both sides for a little bit. Then you're gonna add two cloves of garlic one teaspoon of dried parsley. Go ahead and dump in five cups of low sodium chicken broth. Then you're gonna go ahead and just mix that around. Make sure chicken is covered, everything's covered. Then we're going to pour in 12 ounces of penne pasta. Now my chicken is not cooked all the way through, but it's almost there. And then I wanna make sure that every noodle is covered with a liquid, because if it's not, it's going to burn. So if you need to add more liquid, go ahead and do it. All right, our lid is on. Our little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. We're pushing the pressure cooker manual button, and then we're cooking for only four minutes. When it's done, go ahead and turn the knob to venting. Let all the pressure out. When all the pressure's out, go ahead and lift it up and then mix it around. Now we're gonna push the saute button. You're gonna add eight ounces of cream cheese, about one cup of mozzarella cheese, a fourth cup of Parmesan cheese, and go ahead and just mix that all together until a lot of the cheese has started to melt. Now in a small bowl, I mixed one tablespoon of water and one tablespoon of cornstarch, and I mixed it in with the cheese in there too. Now go ahead and push the saute button to get all that extra liquid out so it can be the texture that you want it to be. 
So you're gonna go ahead and push the saute button, then you're gonna add a little bit of olive oil when it's hot, and you're gonna add an onion. Go ahead and mix that around a little bit until it softens. Then you're gonna add one pound of Italian sausage. You're gonna chop that up and brown it. Now while you're waiting for that to cook, you're gonna add two teaspoons of minced garlic, a fourth teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and six cups of chicken broth. Go ahead and just pour that all in. Go ahead and mix that around a little bit. Then we're gonna add three large russet potatoes that I've chopped. You can leave the skins on you can, or you can peel them off. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna mix it one more time. Maybe add just a little bit of salt and pepper for taste. Then it's time to put the lid on. So you're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Make sure it, it's on nice and snug. Turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. You're gonna push pressure cook or manual button and you're gonna cook it for 15 minutes. When it's all done, go ahead and turn the knob to venting. Let all the pressure out, then you can open up the lid. You're gonna add some heavy cream. Now, if you don't like heavy cream, I'm using a little bit of sour cream today, and just mix that in all together. Now, while it's still hot, you're gonna add two cups of kale and about six slices of bacon. Then mix it all together, and you seriously have a delicious dinner ready to go. Now if you need a little help with your Instant Pot, we actually have an Instant Pot course that will teach you from start to finish. It also gives you a ton of fun Instant Pot ideas. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link down below in the description for you. All right guys, thanks for joining me. If you want more Instant Pot recipes, I have tons. You can find my favorite playlist right up there. All right everyone, I'll see you later. Bye!